Good morning. I'm Stacy Telnock from Blue Sky and Blooms here in northeastern Pennsylvania, and I wanted to share with you my chicken first aid kit today. I've read a lot online. I read for over a year I studied before I became a chicken keeper, wanting to make sure I had everything I would need, and I found everybody's lists to be pretty overwhelming. So over time, I've developed what I've needed and what I haven't needed yet, but I think I might at some point. And I wanted to share with you my very small, pretty complete chicken first aid kit. I keep everything in this little bin right here, uh, everything that I need. And the first thing I want to tell you to have in your chicken first aid kit is an old towel. And you can see this has uh, some blue coat on it, which we're going to talk about in a moment. And you don't want to be searching through your bathroom cabinetry to find a crappy towel to use uh, in the event of an emergency. As everybody knows, the time to plan for an emergency is not in the midst of the emergency. Uh, so have that towel on hand. Uh, when you need it, it's there. The next thing I have in my kit is something that's kind of funny and a little, you know, maybe seems a little silly to people. But this is a chicken apron, and I bought this online. I researched, and I was trying to find one inexpensive and also from someone that I wanted to buy from. And I found Shade Tree Acre, Shade Tree Acre, three words, um, for poultry, waterfowl, and more. It's Robert and Montana Combs are the owners from Maple Hill, North Carolina. And a chicken apron would be to protect the back and the upper, the lower neck area of a chicken from over mating, like rough mating, or if the chickens are pecking that particular hen, uh, there might be some blood drawn in the back and chickens are cannibals and they will attack. So please have something to protect your bird. And I have this and just wanted to share with you where I got that. I don't know Robert or Montana, but they are uh, veterans and they're suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome and they are building their own business and taking care of business. So I, I respect that and thank them for their service. Something else I have in my First aid kit is what I talked about earlier, which is Blue Coat. I want to read the label right to you. It's from Dr. Naylor, Blue Coat, Veterinary Antiseptic Protective Wound Dressing with Dauber Cap. It's a germicidal and fungicidal, that's important, uh, liquid, and it's dark indigo blue. It will stain everything. So if that's a concern to you, and that's what you can see on the towel over here, those little spots I showed you earlier. If that's a concern to you, then make sure that you keep rubber gloves or latex-free version right in your first aid kit. Uh, very inexpensive uh, little addition to your kit. I have some fake eggs in here, some little wooden eggs, and I put those in the nesting boxes. When I have new layers, I'm trying to encourage them to, you know, to know where to go, because they do, they peek in and look around to see what's going on when those hens keep coming out of you know, that one area, and I want them to see what should be there. Also, I have a little container of Vaseline. It doesn't matter to me if you use Vaseline or generic brand or whatever. Petroleum jelly is petroleum jelly. Uh, sorry, but it is. Uh, I like this container, which is having to be made by Vaseline, because I can open it with one hand and use it. And when you have a chicken first aid issue, keep in mind, you're going to be having chicken in one arm and whatever you're doing in the other. So everything that I have pretty much I want to be able to use single-handed in the event of an emergency. Something else I have are Q-tips and they're just in this nice little case which keeps them dry. Uh, if I happen to be in a rainy situation or whatever, I like this little case. It's a travel case. You can find it anywhere. Uh, those little travel accessories are sold in those bins at your stores. Something else is the antibiotic ointment. Um, this is just generic, but you can use Neosporin, whatever, whatever you want. Uh, this is a godsend when it comes to any kind of infection for people or anybody. Doctors I know have been saying lately to use Bacitracin instead of Neosporin, so I've taken all my Neosporin packets, or Neosporin tubes, if you will, and I put them into my chicken uh, first aid kit. This has been wonderful for the injuries I've had. I've had some uh, I had my rooster Jules get his waddle ripped in half, and then it kind of dried and fell off, and this was an absolute necessity and you don't want to have to look for it and you're in the middle of that emer emergency. I also have bag balm and I know that bag balm gets a bad rap from a lot of people saying it doesn't really do anything, uh, you know, always use an antibiotic ointment instead. Well, I use this a little differently. I don't use it so much for medicinal purposes rather than prevention. I know that when it's dry and cold outside, my lips feel better when I protect them with moisturizer. You know, I put you put on uh, your chapstick or your lip balm or whatever you have. I find this to work exactly the same way on the combs and waddles of my chickens and also on their legs. In the wintertime, I had one of my hens, Penelope, my barred rock, 
her legs actually split open right where her foot connects, you know, right on her ankle, if you will. Uh, both of them split open, and I think it was just dry skin. I mean, they were super dry and flaky. It was cold outside, and to me, it just made sense to start to use this. So whenever I notice my chickens have that, you know, scaliness or the alligator syndrome on their legs, I take just a little teeny bit of this, not a lot, because if you put too much of this or too much Vaseline, that can actually freeze on their skin instead of being absorbed by their skin. And that will cause more problems than you probably had to begin with. So be very cautious about the amount that you use. Uh, but I put the bag balm again on their legs like a moisturizer in the wintertime and on the tops of their feet, uh, the bottom if I see some deep scales there. And it's really worked wonderful uh, for me. I'm happy with it. So I like the bag balm and it lasts forever. Also, this is a new addition. I haven't doctored it up like I want to yet. I'll tell you about that in a minute. This is called Coflex, and you'll actually find this in the horse care aisle, all different colors. So, you know, if you want purple or pink or whatever, you'll find it. Um, I like teals and blues, so that's what I bought. Uh, this is a co-adhesive product, which means you can actually wrap it around. It also says that it, uh, it, it contains natural rubber latex, which can cause allergic reactions. Uh, so pay attention once you put it on to your animal. Uh, just to, to make sure there's no actual reaction happening. My gosh, you wouldn't want to wrap them up and put them away for the night and then wake up, you know, in the, in the morning and have, see that they'd suffered all night. Uh, so I actually want to take this and cut it in half with a saw. I can't see myself needing like this three to four inch wide um, width for chickens. So I'm going to just cut that in half and then I'll have it. And I love the co-adhesive part. You don't have to mess with tape and scissors you know, when you're dealing with one-handedness, you can just wrap it right around. Um, so that's what goes into my chicken first aid kit. There's something else that's in my feed bin that I want to tell you about, which is from Neutrina. And this is Feather Fixer. If you have molting chickens, if you have chickens that, whose feathers have been plucked out, either by other chickens or themselves, please address whatever's happening. Um, but this will help the recovery. Um, it's almost like vitamins, you know, extra vitamins for hair and nails for people. Uh, regular layer feed for hens is 16% protein. This is 18%. That might not sound like a big difference, but when you mix this in, uh, I've actually used control groups, mix it in, not mix it in. It works faster. Their feathers grow back faster when you use this product. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like. Completely worth uh, the money. And last but not least, this isn't necessarily my chicken first aid kit, but I found this to be a great overall, you know, just, resource before I got chickens. And this is the joy of chicken, excuse me, the joy of keeping chickens. And what I like about this book, it, it just talks about everything. It talks about having chickens for eggs, chickens for meat, chicken as pets, it's everything. Um, I've read this cover to cover four or five times and it's an easy read. It's not super technical. It says the ultimate guide to raising poultry for fun or profit. And that's exactly what it delivers. I mean, it has great images, great pictures, as you go through using the eggs you produce, um, you know, from linking to recipes. So there's all kinds of great stuff in this book that I just wanted to share that with you really quick. Again, the joy of keeping chickens. Uh, and you can get this online. The cover price when I purchased this, it might've changed by now, I don't know, was $14.95 and it was available at Tractor Supply, at some feed stores, and of course on Amazon or wherever else you buy books online. Uh, so that's what I have as far as my references and what I keep in my little bin here for my chicken first aid kit. And I hope you found this very helpful for your chicken keeping or your future chicken keeping. Thanks so much. Again, I'm Stacey Telnock for Blue Sky and Blooms here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Thank you.